Hey guys, tell me first, beginner or a pro? It doesn't matter. I will teach you from zero to become a senior SSAS specialist. Welcome to SSAS Comprehensive Training. In this comprehensive training, we intend to teach you all the topics of SSAS in a primary and step-by-step -step manner. If you stay with us until the end of this training course, I am sure you will be excited. Are you ready? So let's go. First, let me give you a general classification of this training. Then we will go into the details of each part. This training is prepared for you in four training levels. 1. SSAS Tutorial for Beginners Don't worry. This section is for you. For the first time, we try to prepare a tutorial for beginners to learn all the topics entirely and practically. All concepts of SSAS 2022, along with installation and setup of all tool, with an industrial perspective and practical examples. In this part, we start from step zero. We download and install all the tools we need together. Then we go to the initial setup of SSAS. And at the end, we run a simple project in this environment. Then we describe the SSAS architecture in detail. We enter the architecture and examine all its components. This way, you understand the concepts very quickly and know where each of these parts is used. Two. SSAS Tutorial for Intermediate We enter the realistic environment in the second part, which is for intermediate. In eight steps, I will teach you how to implement an SSAS project from start to finish. Here you can quickly analyze and implement any SSAS industrial project in eight basic steps. Indeed, SSAS has nothing else except these eight steps. I prefer not to talk about this. You can see and enjoy yourself. 3. SSAS Tutorial for Advance In Tutorial 3, we will explore data mining and machine learning in SSAS. Here we learn machine learning algorithms ultimately. Along with algorithms, we introduce the CRISP methodology so that you can implement all industrial data mining projects with a global standard. 4. SSAS Tutorial for Industry And the last step is to find out how to deliver the final output of our work to the customer. We will learn how to connect the model we created to user interface tools such as Power BI, Windows application, web application, etc. Here the customer is amazed because we give him exactly what he needs, not a series of complicated models. So tell me now, are you ready to start training? So I won't keep you waiting and let's start the first part of the training. Part 1. SSAS Tutorial for Beginners First, we start by defining SQL Server Analysis Services. SQL Server Analysis Services SSAS, is an OLAP tool that you can use to build cubes from data stored in OLTP databases or data warehouses. This lets you perform faster analyses of your business data. To do this, it's necessary to carry out a process from the first stage, data collection, to the last step, showing the final result to the user. In the following section, I'll teach you in a step-by-step -step manner. 1. Tools needed to set up. This is the beginning of our journey. Did you take everything? We all know that when it comes to taking a trip, the first thing that comes to mind is packing for the trip. We should prepare the supplies for the trip. We need a series of tools in our journey, which we need to get to know first and prepare afterward. So let's see. SSAS cannot be downloaded separately. It is a service you must install on SQL Server and Visual Studio. So you must first know all the tools you need to do this and download them in order. Here are the tools you need to work with Analysis Services, Microsoft SSAS, and download them first. 1. SQL Server 2. SSMS 3. Visual Studio To download these tools, just enter the NILL2 Bill website and download all these tools at once. This video has a detailed article containing both the training presented in this video and all the tools we introduce below. I put the access link to this comprehensive article below this video. Well, let's continue our education. 2. Install the required tools. So far, you have downloaded everything you need, and now you have them on your system. After doing all these tasks, you have all the tools needed to work with the SSAS. Now you should start installing the tools. In this article, we have prepared for you the installation steps of these tools in detail. Please install the tools based on the steps introduced in this article. 3. 
Preparing the ingredients. In this step, we are going to download some free data. AdventureWorks DW 2019 database together. Restore the data in our system. Discuss the tables of this database. Facts and dimensions. And then learn the establishment and creation of an SSAS project. You must know that when we talk about SQL Server Analysis, data is an essential part of the work. Therefore, before you run this service, you must have data. Do you agree with this? Microsoft has provided sample databases for different versions of SQL Server and other purposes. These free samples are pre-filled with data, and you can easily download these samples based on the type of work you have, OLTP or OLAP and a lightweight version. The version we need is AdventureWorks 2019 which is the perfect version for SSAS tasks. This version has dimension and fact tables, whose dimension tables are prefixed with dim, and fact tables are named with fact prefix. This version is very suitable for the learning process of Microsoft SSAS, and we can meet almost all the data needs we need at the beginning of learning through this data. So please download this database first through the links provided in the article. Then restore it to your system according to the instructions in the article and continue the tutorial with me. 5. SSAS Architecture The gateway to SSAS is to understand its architecture. Tell me the beginning and the end of the trip. The architecture tells you. Number 1. Where the starting point is. Number 2. What is done during the journey. Number 3. Which tools do we take advantage of to reach the final desired destination for us and the customer? This architecture is made up of four parts. 1. OLTP. 2. Data Warehouse. 3. OLAP. 4. Interface. To simplify these concepts, I will start with the SSAS architecture. Architecture tells you where each MS SQL Analysis Services project starts and ends. From beginning to end, there are several concepts and tools that, if understood, will make the rest of Microsoft SSAS easier for you. So stay with me to discuss architecture and its components in the best possible way. If you understand the SQL Server Analysis Services architecture, which is very simple, you will fully understand all my talk about SSAS below. That's why I chose it as the first part for you to enter the world of SQL Server Analysis Service. Architecture tells you where to go, what to do along the way, and what tools to use to get to our final destination, technically, and the customer, in terms of requirements. 1. OLTP According to the introduced architecture, our entry point is data of the OLTP nature. Everything starts here. Assume a hypothetical organization that collects daily data through its SQL Server or any other database management system similar to Oracle. First, we specify the data source for analysis because everything starts here. For example, consider a hypothetical organization that collects data daily through its SQL Server or any other database management system similar to Oracle. This data is stored in this place over time, and as mentioned, the data may not necessarily be in the same place and may be scattered in different areas due to the type of business they have. As an SSAS specialist, almost all you need to know about relational databases is familiarity with tables, fields, records, and some familiarity with T-SQL. 2. Data Warehouse The second layer you saw in the architecture is the data warehouse. The garbage must be put away. Dirty data is not suitable for analysis. Do you agree? The data source may be directly from a data warehouse, rather than OLTP. The advantage of this type of data is that it is clear from the beginning and does not need to be cleaned. Do you agree that data collected by humans for years may not be clean? And do you agree that analysis of dirty data makes the output of the final model unclean? So they first need to be cleaned up using specialized ETL tools, including SSIS, which is similar to SSAS, another Microsoft Business Intelligence Service, and put in place called a Data Warehouse, DW. 3. OLAP Now we want to enter the OLAP world from the OLTP world. 
This is the real deal. In the world of OLAP, there are four basic concepts that we will learn in detail below. 1. Cube. 2. Dimension. 3. Fact. 4. MDX. Now we create an analytical database. An OLAP database uses a multidimensional structure to facilitate rapid analysis and retrieval of data. The term multidimensional refers to combining multiple dimensions and measures into a single database that can be queried and analyzed. What is an OLAP database? OLAP is short for Online Analytical Processing, a type of database management in which data is stored in a multidimensional structure instead of a tabular format. This type of database is called a cube and contains two main features, fact and dimension, I will explain below. Example. AdventureWorks DW Database is a Microsoft product sample for a cube database. Dimension. Now we have to determine from what dimensions we will analyze the business. For example, we want to know the number of sales of a particular product on a specific date. So here, product and date are our two main dimensions. What is a dimension? Dimensions are the most common way of organizing data. They provide large amounts of rich information about a specific area of interest. Example. Suppose you are going to launch an SSAS project for a store. You first need to imagine what is happening in this store's real world, away from the IT world. You agree that. A customer enters the store on a specific date and buys products. Other customers behave the same way. Their data is stored in a database, by the software already written for this purpose. So you probably guessed that we have four tables, each responsible for keeping the above information. A table for storing customer information. A table for the date. A table for store maintenance. And a table for products. Note, suppose the store is a chain, and we have several stores. As you might have guessed, to analyze this particular example in detail, we need to look at it from four dimensions. So we need four dimensions. Dim customer. Dim date. Dim store. Dim products. Fact. Now we have to determine our intended output, which has a computational nature. In this example, we wanted to get the sales amount of a product as an output. Therefore, we consider the total amount of sales as a measure. Now these measures, calculation fields may be many. Finally, these fields are placed in a table called fact. What is a fact? A measure is a calculation tool in the cube. Each of these measures performs a calculation task. In an analytical project, we may have a number of these measures that together form a measure group. These measure groups are included in a term called fact. Since there is no difference between these terms, they can be used interchangeably. Example. Sales amount is a measure that calculates the total amount of sales in the store. Sales quantity and sales price are separate measures, each of which performs a particular calculation task. The sum of these measures together forms a measure group, fact. Therefore, we can conclude that in this example, we have a fact named. Fact sales. Measure types. So far, you are familiar with measures. Now we must have a classification of the measures themselves. In general, we have two types of measure. Base measures. These types of measures are created directly from the fields of the fact table. In other words, the measures we had so far were of this category. For example, sales amount. Calculated measures. The second category of measures is calculated measures. Sometimes it is necessary to create a series of custom calculation fields based on business needs and use them in different parts. Therefore, it is necessary to add some logic to the primary measures and create a new measure, calculated measure, according to the new requirement. Microsoft SQL Analysis Services provides us with a tool for this purpose. With the help of this tool, calculations and MDX language, we can quickly create any calculated measure. Of course, it should be noted that you don't need to code with MDX in this section. It provides you with a visual environment where you can add measures by drag and drop and apply the required formula to them. Behind the scenes, this tool itself generates MDX codes for you. MDX. So far, we have determined the analytical database, the dimensions required for the analysis, and the computational work. 
Now whenever we need to access this output, we have to send a request to this database. So here, we need a query language that is specific to this type of database. This language is called MDX, and we send all our requests to Q through this language. What is an MDX? MDX, multidimensional expressions, is a query language for working with OLAP databases, similar to TSQL language in OLP databases. All the requests that we need to be made on this type of database are done with the commands of this language. Visualization. In the last step, we have to show this final output to the user differently. Example. The final output in the previous example is usually a number determining the business's total sales, for example, $17,659,000. This number should be displayed to the customer as a user-friendly output. To show this result to the customer, we can use the following tools. Power BI Dashboard. Mobile Application. Web Application. What we reviewed together as a summary of OLAP components. The whole process of an SAS project is like this. Each of them has its details and a different way of implementation. Before entering the intermediate stage of SAS training, you must familiarize yourself with these concepts. Therefore, I suggest that you first read the following sources. I carefully designed these resources to help you master this part of the training. See you in the next section.